Perfect. Okay, I show 6.30. We will reconvene the public session. Roll call, all board members are present and accounted for. And public comment announcement. Pursuant to board policy number 2350, public comment may be limited to five minutes per person. All speakers who would like to comment regarding the matter on the meeting agenda <coughs> must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting in which the agenda item is called. All speakers who would like to comment regarding the matter not on the meeting agenda must submit a public comment card to the board president or recording secretary prior to the point in the meeting for open forum on non-agenda items. Public comment cards are available at the information table at the rear of the boardroom from the recording secretary or online. Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Buffalo, will you please lead us? Please stand, place your hand over your heart, place the flag, begin with me. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the, to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Agenda approval. May I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So move. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Pass it with five good votes. Number 10, open forum on non agenda items. We have no cards. Is there anyone on the line who would like to make comment? Nope. Okay, we move on to presentations. Construction update. Mr. Benedetti, Ms. Hidgens Tate. Uh, turn the mic on. Yeah, perfect. Good evening. Um, this is our presentation. It will provide an overview and update on completed, current, in progress, and planned bond and non bond funded projects. Palmdale Center. This project was 16,872 square feet of classroom space and 6,777 of administrative space. This project was completed in September 2018. Palmdale Tech Center. ABC leased new retail space located next to the new Palmdale Center facility to move the Palmdale Airport facility for airframe. ABC has since leased the entire building and in the planning states of entering into an agreement with the Air Force for a KD lab. Foxfield and Foxfield Hangar. The Foxfield first phase of this project consisted of classrooms and labs being constructed. The adjacent hangar was remodeled and included a new airframe lab. This facility was dedicated on February 19, 2021. Infrastructure and PV re relocation project. This project is intended to provide main utilities to all the new buildings and refurbish all the existing facilities. It also included relocating the nine solar panels to make access for the new entryway on J12 and 30th Street West. Marauder Complex. This is the new athletic complex to be located uh, to the west of the stadium with seven modular buildings, uh, three refurbished and two new ones. The space included new athletic offices, uh, laundry, locker rooms, and the occupancy is set for April of this year. Campus security. This building will be a permanent facility for our sheriffs and security officers, as well as our emergency command center. Uh, this is going to be occupied later on this month. Sage Hall, a two-story building will be replacing the learning center and Parts of student services. It has instructional spaces and faculty offices. The building will be complete in September of this year. Discovery Lab. Discovery Lab is uh, going to house the new airframe, electronics, avionics, electrical, fire studies, and welding classes. Student services. This building will replace the existing student services building. It, uh, is currently being constructed. You can see the steel frame up on the 30th, on the 30th street side. It will be completed in June of 2022. Cedar Hall. Cedar Hall is a new three-story building that will contain classrooms, uh, the lecture halls, facility office, faculty offices, 
and the new boardroom. The building is currently uh, with the Division of State Architect and will be approved starting April of next year. Gymnasium renovation. This project is to renovate the existing gymnasium, including the electrical and all, all mechanical and plumbing. Um, it will remove the pool and put in a new fitness center and uh, upgrade the outside and, and the signage. The commons. The commons will replace the student center building, including the bookstore. <coughs> it will have a full service kitchen and dining area, as well as many gathering spaces for students. Construction is slated to begin in May 2022 with an estimated completion date of July 2024. Campus signage and wayfinding. This final project was to update, modernize, and provide consistency and direction with new signage throughout campus. The signage included parking lots, driveways, walkways, and building signage. This project is set to be completed this summer. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Yeah, I have a comment, Mr. President. Go ahead. Um, do we currently have a swimming pool on campus? We have a swimming pool in the gymnasium. Okay, and is this new uh, swimming pool going to be Olympic size? We're not, we're not putting the new pool in. We are eliminating the pool uh -huh. and, and, and turning that area into a fitness center. Okay. Well, um, you know, if we have a pool, you know, uh, will the community be able to use it besides the campus? We won't have a pool. The pool is oh. leaving. Oh, I see. The, 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 the pool right now has been there since 1960. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's no longer functioning yet. Correct. Oh, okay. If we, if we redid it, it cost us over about $3, 4000000 Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question I'd like to piggyback on his. Is there room down the road if we should want to add a pool? Um, it's in the master plan, but what we're, we're planning on doing is uh, renting, using the pool over at the Y for our adaptive fee. Then we don't have any maintenance on it. Uh, just to further clarify, we don't have any competitive teams in swimming. We don't have any swimming or diving teams or water polo teams. Uh, there's limited use for uh, adaptive PE classes in the water, in the pool, and those kinds of things. We work something out with the Y that we can use their pool. The cost of the existing pool, which is not competitive, it's a 25 meter pool, um, and the maintenance cost of that annually is prohibitive to, to maintain it. We did have one originally in a community center building that was taken out of the master plan early on because of the exorbitant cost of the building and the lack of utility to the community, particularly when both cities have said that they're going to open convention facilities. I have a question. Sorry. Um, so where did you say the student services building was going to be again? The new one? The new student services building? Correct. Located on 30th Street. It's that big. The, the two-story steel with the, the steel structure. Okay, and right then there. so that's not going to conflict with Cedar Hall, right? Cedar Hall goes where the old student services building is right now. Okay, and then that one. Okay, got it. Cedar Hall is going to go where you are right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right here. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> it's going to be three stories tall, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it looks beautiful. I'm sorry. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it's going to be really nice. Okay, and then that one. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the board? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 11.2, COVID update. And we have uh, Casey Scudmore and Terry Cleveland. Good evening. I'm the director of nursing and I'd like to give you a, an update on COVID. Uh, next slide, please. So currently in LA County, we are in tier one. The infection rate has actually gone down since last week. It's now 2.7%. We have vaccinated over 2 million people. We have an MOU for a pod, but um, currently there are several institutions, including Kaiser, that are doing a massive vaccination at the fairgrounds. And we have nursing students that are out volunteering and assisting with that effort. Next slide, please. 
COVID admission is down in the hospitals. Samaritan's Purse is no longer needed and they have left. AV Hospital, as of last week, had a 30% ICU admission availability and Palmdale has 75% ICU admission availability. Next slide, please. K-12 uh, special ed programs are now attending. They've started athletics and they're also allowing students that need credit recovery in high school. Next slide, please. AVC athletics, the athletes are being tested on Thursdays with the assistance of nursing students and then they can compete on Fridays and Saturdays and that program is going very well. Next slide, please. We are in phase 1B of the vaccination administration and so now educators are, uh, can qualify for getting vaccines. We can make appointments at myturn.ca.gov. We are also uh, vaccinating educators at the fairgrounds. Next slide, please. And now I'm going to hand this over to Terry Cleveland. Thank you. Thank you very much, Casey. This is one of our custodians and he's using one of the new electrostatic spray guns that imparts a static charge to the mist that comes out. So it coats all surfaces front and back. And the custodians use these guns to coat all of the high touch surfaces around campus. They also use the guns to use the disinfectant to cover other surfaces for a little bit more in-depth cleaning. Early on, Aaron hitchman Tag and the safety committee and I started investigating the different portions of campus for the application of these plexiglass virus barriers. And this is just one example, and it happens to be just on the other side of that wall in the student services building. And it shows the number of different virus barriers that we've put in place to keep the folks separated if we couldn't achieve a six foot distance between them. And you'll see these all over campus and we're still looking for areas where we can enhance our safety by putting in more of these. The safety committee also embarked on a series of investigations around campus to see where we needed different types of signage, not just the, the standard of wash your hands, wear your mask and keep six feet of difference, but also to check out where we needed entry and exit signs, where we needed to use stairway signs to remind people to keep at least eight steps difference between them and the person ahead of them and the person behind them. <clears throat> what we needed to do for elevators, where we needed directional signs for our aisles, where we could put any other type of signage that would help direct people to certain items such as disinfectant hand wash, whether it was inside or outside. We also took a look at the different outdoor areas where we had seating and we wanted to make sure that the people wouldn't sit closer than six feet together. And we're still doing inspections. We just did one last week. We did another one this morning. And we're using the inspection forms. You can see one of them there from our OSHA COVID prevention program. And here's another one that we use just to remind us about different things to look for. So that's all in an effort to see how we could further enhance the safety of the campus before we bring more people back. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the board? Mm -hmm. I, I have a quick question. Um, go back, going back to the slide where the uh, one of our uh, custodial staff is using the uh, sprayer. Um, I'm not sure what the chemicals are in that sprayer, but is it are they strong to the point where he would need some type of like a a respirator or something over his face to protect him? No, they're not, they're not harmful to humans, but they are very harmful to the uh, COVID virus. There is a matter of fact on the uh, EPA's list N that it has to be on after it's been approved to kill the uh, COVID virus. Okay. And just a follow-up question to that. You said it was being sprayed on. Oh, first question. Do all custodians have access to this disinfectant uh, gun? 
Every custodian has one of these guns. As a matter of fact, Aaron just picked up a shipment last week to uh, complete our shipment of extra guns that we have. So if something goes wrong with one, we've got uh, another one to put in the hands of the man that maybe it malfunctioned on. And the same with the disinfectant as well, right? I'm sorry? And the same with the disinfectant, like the actual spray that... Yeah, we have plenty of disinfectant. Okay. And then is it just, you said it was high tech surfaces? Is it just the, like the doorknobs and stuff or is it being used all throughout the campus on all different surfaces? It's being used throughout the campus on all different surfaces, soft surfaces, as well as hard non-porous surfaces. Okay, good work, thank you. You're welcome. I, I, do, I do wanna say that if it's sprayed on like a desk, it will crumple up any paper product laying on that desk. It will, yes, I've done that myself. <laughs> Any other questions or comments from the board? Sure. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scott Martin. Moving on, item 12.1, report of closed session action. Uh, consideration of public employee discipline, dismissal, release of employee 20 21 slash E 003 pursuant to government code section 54957. A motion was made by Ms. Gaines, second by Mr. Buffalo. With a five to zero vote, the board reaffirmed the dismissal of employee number 2021 E 003. There are no other reports to make out of closed session at this time. Item 13, closed or consent agenda. I do want to make note of consent agenda item 13.3. There is a correction to the uh, appointment of administrators, page 11.5. Uh, Balthazar Kenelang, uh, the supervisor of, and department uh, is changed. Uh, Aiden Anofre unfortunately passed away, as some of you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, he is, uh, so of course he's not the supervisor of this employee, that would be James Yoakum. So James Yoakum is the new supervisor for Balthazar Kenelang. And the rate of pay uh, was a uh, typo. It should read range 10, step one, $3,330.34 per month. With that correction in mind, may I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda items by unanimous consent. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes it by this votes. Action items 14.1. Approval of the side letter of agreement between Antelope Valley Community College District and Antelope Valley College Federation of Teachers regarding the extension of Board of Trustees tenure review date for spring 2021. May your motion. So move. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes a five yes vote. Item 14.2. Approval of the side letter of agreement between Antelope Valley Community College District and Antelope Valley College Federation of Teachers regarding reassigned time for department chairs during the 2021-2022 academic year. May I a motion? So move. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.3. Approval of the side letter of agreement between Antelope Valley College District and Antelope Valley College Federation of Teachers regarding department chair elections, spring 2021. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.4. Approval of nominations to the California Community College District CCCT 2021 board election and Mr. President, I would like to uh, make a motion that we approve the following seven nominations. Um, Yvette Davis, Glendale Community College District, Bernardo Perez, Ventura County Community College District, Gregory Pensa, Alan Hancock, Joint Community College District, Mary Strobridge, San Luis Obispo County Community College District, Nim, Nan Gomez Heitzberg, Kern County Community College District, Michelle Jenkins, Santa Clarita Community College District, and Deborah Ikeda, State of Center Community College District. Thank you. 
And just as a note, we do generally vote for uh, those trustees who are closest to us geographically, and therefore those would be the seven that, names that you mentioned. Um, Mr. Chairman, yes, um, I have um, two two nominations um, that are uh, people that are here regionally that I would like to be nominated. Uh, Ms. Calhoun from the Compton Community College District and Carol Inman from South Orange Community College District. Well, actually, we had a motion on the on the floor. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second to that initial motion? I'll second. Okay. Yes. Discussion is that there would be a second motion if this one fails. Okay. Any other discussion? Advice. And this is just a question. So we always vote traditionally on the ones closest to us and these seven are the ones closest to us. Yes. Okay, approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That passes with four yes votes. Mr. Reeves voting no. Item 14.5, approval of independent contractor agreement with National Demographics Corporation, NDC. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. That passes with five yes votes. Item 14.6, approval of academic policies and procedures, AP and P committee's recommendations, of course, listing. May I hear a motion? So move. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.7, approval of the 2020-2021 men's football schedule. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.8, approval of Second Amendment of County of Los Angeles and Al Valley College Internship Agreement. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.9, approval of memorandum of understanding between Animal Valley Partners for Health, ABPH, and Food Forward, and Animal Valley College for delivery of fresh produce for students. May your motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.10. Approval to utilize the CalNet Cellular Voice and Data Services Agreement, CA-CVD-19-001-03, and CA-CVD-19-001-01. May I hear a motion? So move. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Pass with five yes votes. Item 14.11, approval of change orders for Discovery Lab Project 17-039 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? So, so moved. Move. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. 14.12, approval of change orders for the Campus Security Project 17-040 with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.13. Approval of change orders for Marauder Complex 17-041 with major AV funds. May your motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Mm -hmm. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.14, approval of amendment to field services contract, general conditions, 17-042 for Andy Gump with major AV funds. May your motion. So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.15, approval of amendment to field services contract, general conditions, 17-042 Pacific Mobile with major AV funds. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.16.
approval of amendment to field services contract general conditions 17-042 for United Site Services with major AB funds. May I hear a motion? So move. Second. Discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Sure. President. Um, I'm, I'm checking uh, the next, this one and the next um, items. And uh, it deals with returning money back to uh, measure AB. And this particular one, 1416, is returning uh, $515,000. And the other one is uh, 533,000. And the other one is 644,000 total of uh, 1.7 million return to measure AB. Um, I thought on some of these contracts that we might have a 10% differential uh, on the bid, but this seems to be a lot more uh, allocated than 10%. Is there any explanation why we're getting all this money back? Well, the first one in, in point of order, Mr. President, we have to take these one at a time as the agenda. We can't take them as three. So you'll have to address with the first one's for United Site Services. Okay. And, uh, what, what, what we did is we reassessed uh, three years into the projects and then we re -pro projected out. And then we have a total savings of it's about 300,000, right? About 300,000, we don't have a million and a half dollars in savings. Okay, we took about $100,000 off of one, about $50,000 off of the other. And these were things where I was adjusting because now jobs are closing down. Okay, when we got the bids, we bid it out as a five year program for a certain amount of, 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 of items, for depending on what they were. Uh, if it was uh, Andy Gump, it's fencing. If it's uh, United Site Services, it's all my facilities, my outhouses and my hand wash stations, which have increased. But, or if it's um, Taft Electric, it's for all the temporary power. Well, now we've gotten down to this situation now where we're bringing stuff back. We know what we've used in the last three and a half years. We can project a little bit more of what we're gonna need in the next year and a half, two years. And so we can cut some of that back and put it back into our budget. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? I hear a motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Advice. Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.70. Approval of amendment to field services contract, general condition 17-042. For Taft Electric with major AB funds. May I hear a motion? So Approved. Approved. Okay, second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Passes with five yes votes. Item 14.18, approval of amendment to field services contract, general conditions 17 042 for waste management with major AB funds. May I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Advice? Approved. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes with five yes vote. Item 15, information items. We have two items on the information item calendar. It should be in your packet. Number one, Animal Valley Community College District Facility Services Monthly Report and Revision of Administrative Procedure 2725, Information and Communications Technology, Accessibility and Acceptable Use. Item 16, reports and announcements. Academic Senate, Mr. Ryder. Good evening, all. Everyone see and hear me fine? Yep. It's good to be with all of you tonight, and I hope all is well for you and your families and loved ones. So good evening, members of the board and President Knudsen. There are four things that I'd like to, to report on um, from the Academic Senate. First and foremost, I'd like to recognize the efforts and the accomplishments of the tenured and the tenure track faculty who are listed in as part of the consent agenda, item 13.3. The Senate congratulates each individual and expresses gratitude for their dedication to learning, student success, and discipline expertise. A special word of congratulations goes to the three counselors, Tawana Cately, T. Shaklunt, and Tanya McGinnis, who have been recommended to receive tenure. I express my personal gratitude to them and their dedication in counseling. 
Additionally, I express the appreciation to the tenure committee chairs, the committee members, the tenure coordinator, the vice president of academic affairs and the vice president of academic affairs senior administrator assistant who have and continue to work together in seeing the fruition of this really important <clears throat> process. This is only, this year has only been complicated. Um, uh, excuse me, this year has only complicated a, a labor intensive process and I express that appreciation. I also want to express acknowledgement and gratitude for the standing committee chairs who are finishing their multi-year terms this semester. In particular, from the equivalence chair, Priscilla Jennison, the honors program co-chairs, Tamira Palmado de Spain and BJ Jennings, the learning outcomes committee chair, Glenn Holler, enrollment management, Angela Kritzglu, academic policies and procedure, Catherine Mitchell, distant education and technology committee, Perry Jellica. And we congratulate the newly appointed chairs to these standing committees that will begin in fall 2021. For the equivalency chair, Jack B. Holiday, the honors program co-chairs, Tawana Caitlin and D Darcy Weevall. For the learning outcomes committee chair, Gary Heaton Smith. For enrollment management, Rick Mottawakum. For the academic policies and procedures, Scott Lee. And for distance education technology committees, Perry Jellica. These committee chairs do amazing work for the entire institution, not just for the faculty and for the students, but for the entire ABC campus. We would not be able to accomplish the great work that the faculty are engaged in and the administration and the institution without these great chairs. So I appreciate those who have served and look forward to serving with those in the fall. Third, we want to acknowledge the collective work by the Campus Safety Committee, the Instructional Continuity and the Institution for Higher Education. Much of this behind the scenes work is being accomplished to prepare the campus to meet safety guidelines and return of faculty and students. Tonight's presentation is a good example of the ongoing efforts and we thank you from the Senate. To improve communication of ongoing preparations, plans, expectations and information, the Senate would ask and recommend that a bi-monthly or weekly update be published as a widespread email or announcements as part of an outreach strategy that would be coordinated with the campus's Do Your Part campaign, for example. At present, the student's main means of communicating information is the ABC COVID-19 Employee and Student Guide homepage. Finally, number four, at the most recent Senate meeting, members of the Shared Governance Basics Needs Committee shared important information. This committee helps Antelope Valley College students access on campus and community resources to maximize, maximize student success in achieving educational goals by connecting them with on and off campus resources to help increase student success and quality of life. The Senate urges the board to continue its support of current initiatives, to strengthen relationships with community partners and to explore additional avenues that it can improve and impact the lives of our most vulnerable populations of students. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I'm 16.2, Antelope Valley College Federation teacher, Dr. Aurora Bird. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes. All righty. Um, well, good evening, President Knudsen and members of the Board of Trustees. The Federation continues to urge the districts to increase transparency and attention to safety related to COVID-19. According to the ABC website, as of February 8th, there were 78 total confirmed COVID-19 cases of students, employees, or community members utilizing district facilities. As of March 3rd, there are 90 total cases. Separate outbreaks in the ABC nursing program and the ABC CPE cohort have shown up on the LA County Department of Public Health list of educational settings meeting the criteria of three or more lab confirmed COVID-19 cases. It's extremely disturbing that the campus was not notified of these outbreaks, although they were listed on the LA County website. The Federation continues to be concerned about the college's plan for summer. A recent single question query of faculty who are scheduled to teach this summer showed that nearly 65% of respondees preferred to teach fully online with just over 21% wishing to teach fully face-to-face -face, and less than 14% wishing for a hybrid of online instruction with a few face-to-face -face sessions. 
many faculty respondees commented that they were reluctant to return to face-to-face -face instruction of any kind until vaccines were widely available to both faculty and students. According to the US government, vaccine access for all interested adults likely won't exist until the end of May with full immunity roughly two weeks after an individual's final shot. We are angry and frightened that ABC plans for a large scale return to campus for mid-May at the beginning of the summer term prior to widespread vaccine access and with no plan for widespread testing, which is being done weekly for athletics, but somehow can't be done for the wider campus community. It's one thing to bring back essential workforce disciplines with a focus on PPE and protocol to reduce transmission or to allow faculty who wish to teach face-to-face -to, -face to offer classes in a face-to-face -face or hybrid mode. It's another to force faculty to teach in this mode, regardless of vaccine availability, regardless of straightforward reporting of the numbers on campus with no commitment to widespread testing. I noticed that as of tonight, those who wish to comment in person at this very board meeting need to wear a face covering, social distance, and be temperature screened and only stay at the meeting to provide the, their comment unless space is available. The board members are masked distance and behind separate shields. Are these same precautions going to be taken for faculty, staff, and students who will be in classrooms for far longer than the length of a typical board meeting and in closer proximity to other people? Make no mistake, ABC employees and students' lives are put at risk by a premature return to face-to-face -face instruction. By the way, I've heard a persistent rumor that faculty are in negotiations with the district about the upcoming return to campus. This rumor is false. The campus was notified by the president of the reopening plan on Wednesday, March 3rd. We issued our demands to bargain over the effects of this plan on Friday, March 5th. This morning, we received a, ply, a reply from the college's interim general counsel acknowledging our demand. We hope to schedule negotiation sessions in the very near future, but it is untrue that we are already in negotiations. I love my job, but I'm not ready to lay down my life or that of my family when it seems that just a few more months of waiting for widespread vaccine availability will enable a much safer reopening. Understand that trust in the administration is one of the requirements for reopening and the actions of this administration have done nothing to incur that trust. Lastly, faculty are still waiting for their retro paychecks from the last contract covering the 2018-19 and part of the 2019-2020 academic years, which we find alarming given that the campus no longer has a VP of HR. We have been told that these checks should arrive in either March or April. It would be collegial to have some confirmation of that. Thank you and see you next month. Thank you. Item 16.3, Animal Valley College Federation of Classified Employees, Panel 4. Pamela? Are you muted, Pamela? Not on? All right, moving on to 16.4. Competent with management, supervisory, administrator employees, Bill Carson. Good evening. Um, CMSA is looking forward to our annual scholarship. We are very close to reaching our endowment goal, which could allow for more scholarships in the future. Thank you. Thank you. 16.5, Associate Student Organization, Cameron Zapetta. Is he on? Nope. 16.6, Animal Valley College Foundation, Van Knippel. Nope. Item 16.7, Office of Superintendent <clears throat> President, Mr. Knudsen. Uh, just a couple of quick items um, to reinforce, reinforce what uh, Dr. Scudmore said earlier. Um, our nursing students are working with uh, Kaiser and, and other locations in the community to assist with delivering vaccines. The vaccines have been um, offered to educational institutions or educational employees. Um, the city of Lancaster in partnership with Kaiser Permanente and, the, and Blue Shield opened a mass vaccination site at the fairgrounds today. Um, there are several locations for the vaccine availability throughout town and we're very confident that that uh, we'll be delivering those on an effective basis uh, and keeping up with what the state distributes to us as far as the vaccines go. Um, the, uh, the athletes are competing. 
Uh, it's been a very safe environment. We're very pleased with that. Um, I do want to reinforce that the reports that we have on the web page about um, exposures or positive tests don't necessarily mean that they occurred here, but rather that they were at they work here or have been here at one time. But the exposure didn't necessarily happen on campus. As a matter of fact, the exposures on campus are very minimal in comparison to the total. Um, one last thing, uh, the, as uh, Ron and Aaron pointed out, we will be opening some buildings over the course of the remainder of the year that will bring our total to, uh, we will open five buildings this year. Um, and then we will also be hopefully populating the new Palmdale Tech Center, which is adjacent to our Palmdale Center. We're working right now on a partnership with the Air Force Research Lab for a makerspace in conjunction with the California Aeronautical Institute. Um, and we, uh, I have had some discussions with the high school district on how we might be able to further partner with them and in this regard. And we also are working with Cal State Long Beach and the engineering program uh, that we have in, in articulation with Cal State Long Beach uh, to see if we can uh, move them over and have them be a part of the newer facility in Palmdale. And we'll get that program closer to Plant 42, which would be effective as well. And one last thing, Mr. President, at your direction and that of the rest of the board, we will be transitioning to in-person meetings for the board with the April meeting. We will continue to live stream on YouTube. Uh, however, uh, in-person comments uh, will take place here at the board with all the safety requirements that you see. We will be publishing the methods and protocols that will be used to attend those meetings and what will be expected when we do that but we'll start the transition back to live board meetings in April. Thank you. Board member comments, Mr. Zhu. Yeah, I have been getting a few emails and a few students have came and talked to me about how safe the campus is gonna be for reopening next semester or even summer semester, especially also with the, with all the numbers and with vaccines and how that's all gonna work and especially with um, athletics as well. So I've been emailing the athletic director and trying to talk to some administrators to see if I can get an in-person tour. And then I'll be doing that and then noting down what I find and then relaying that back to the students to ensure that they have peace of mind when they come back. Thank you. Ms. Arby? Uh, microphone. Um, I would like to thank uh, Ms. Arby. And no worries. Uh, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to thank uh, President Knuspen and Patty and the IT department for supplying me with the computer where I could hear and see the meeting tonight. Uh, and also, Patty, thank you for the shield by the podium so people can remove their masks. I appreciate the consideration of the administration and the board for somebody that's uh, hearing and visually impaired. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Um, first of all, I, I want to um, thank again and congratulate President Knudsen and Dr. Maria Clinton and the entire team for the wonderful open, opening that we saw at Fox Field in, with the hangar and the classrooms. Uh, I was extremely touched to hear that we have uh, promoted or graduated over 2,000 students from this program and 30 of them being homeless students. Um, that, that, is, that is phenomenal work. I'm, I'm just honored to be uh, a member of this board. I, I also uh, wanted to say that on a personal note, I am thrilled at the possibility of returning to even a blended model of instruction in summer. I personally do not believe that distance learning is good for students. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buffalo. A couple of things, and I second what Barbara said. I don't think it's good for students either because I run into a lot of students and I hear a lot of things and, and they're not real excited about staying with the distance learning or the virtual or whatever you want to call it. I was uh, really excited to uh, run into some of our faculty members or get a chance to chat with them that have already had their vaccinations. They're ahead of me, I get my final one tomorrow. But uh, I think that's great that they already have appointments so they've already got them done. 
And uh, I happen to also, in a couple of those faculty members brought up that after the memo came out, their classes, their students were very, very excited about returning to in-person classes in the fall. And I can't emphasize that enough. They were really excited. And I happened to get a chance to talk to three students. I happened to go to places like Jamba Juice, Starbucks, Kaiser, you see our students there. And they also expressed a lot of excitement in the last couple of days after hearing that we're gonna be back. So that's about it. And I think we're good to go, Mike. Thank you. And we have no need to go back into closed session. So our date of our next meeting is April 12th, 2021. Thank you, and this meeting is adjourned. Sorry. Yeah.